Hi there! For my modem sounds video, I've gotten some questions about the meaning of the sounds that modems make. The short answer is that modems are negotiating their connection, but this leaves out a lot of fun detail. The nature of the negotiation is interesting, and for later modems, it can be quite complex. The evolution of the sounds in the video is an evolution of the protocols the modems use to talk to one another. Covering all of the protocols used is too much for one video, but if we're going to start at the beginning of dial-up modems as most people know them, we need to talk about audio frequency shift keying and Bell 103. To do this, we'll record an example of two 300 baud modems communicating, and then decode the bits manually in an audio editor. So let's start with our example recording. So let's start out by looking at this again, but instead listening to the audio that we recorded on the wire. So we start out with a dial tone, dialing, and the ringer. And then in here you can actually hear me picking up the phone and fiddling around with it. We have two tones that we'll come to in a minute, and then when I type, we hear this. So that's sending from the originating modem to the answering modem and then in the other direction. From the answerer to the caller, we hear the same thing, but at a higher frequency. What are we hearing there? Well, there are really two things we want to cover. We want to cover the tones that we heard after the modems connected, and then the tones that we heard while I was actually typing. So let's start with the tones that we heard while we were actually connecting. These modems were communicating using something called Bell 103. Now, the Bell 103 was actually the model of a modem that was introduced in 1962. But since most modems that operate at 300 baud, at least in North America, emulate Bell 103, it's also come to be known as a standard for communicating at 300 baud. Anyway, uh, it transmits at 300 bits per second, and it was the follow-up to the 110 bits per second Bell 101 that was introduced in 1958. And Bell 103 modems use something called audio frequency shift keying to encode their data. Audio frequency shift keying is something we'll talk about in just a minute. But the important thing to know right now is that each modem gets a pair of frequencies that it uses to communicate. So the originating modem, the modem on the left in our video, uses what's called a mark tone of 1270 hertz and a space tone of 1070 hertz. The answering station, so the modem on the right, uses a mark tone of 2,225 hertz and a space tone of 2,025 hertz. Now, mark and space are basically one and zero in the context of this modem. But one other thing to note is that when the modems are idle, they're not sending any data at all, their idle tones are the mark tones. So when we connect, but we're not sending any data, we should be hearing two tones at the same time, one of them being 1,270 hertz, and the other one being 2,225 hertz. And it turns out that this is exactly what we see. If we look at the tone that we hear when the first modem picks up, we see 2,226 hertz at this peak. And then if we look when both modems are talking, we see two peaks, one at 1,277 hertz and another one at 2,227 hertz. These are fairly close to the 1270 and 2225 that we expect. Let's zoom in on the audio for the part where I was actually typing. This would be the audio for sending from the originating modem to the answering modem. We're going to switch over from the waveform to a spectrogram. I'm just going to pause here a second and go over what we're actually seeing on the screen. In a spectrogram, things are broken down by frequency, time, and amplitude instead of just amplitude versus time like in a waveform. The frequency is represented on the vertical axis. You can see that we have two strong lines, uh, one at around 2200 hertz, that's our 2225 hertz idle tone, and then another one just below 1300 hertz, and that's our 1270 hertz idle tone. And the intensity of those lines represent the amplitude, and then going from left to right, we have time. So what we can see here is that as I started to type, 
the frequency from the originating modem changed from the mark tone at 1270 hertz to the space tone at 1070 hertz. And it actually goes back and forth a bit as we transmit the data. This is what audio frequency shift keying was referring to when we were looking at the Bell 103 modem earlier. The data is encoded into ones and zeros by changing the frequency from a one frequency or a mark frequency to a zero frequency or a space frequency. Before we dive into this any further, I think we should talk about the format of that data. That format is described by RS-232. Anytime you've heard about a serial port, if it's one of these older ones with 25 or 9 pins, you're talking about an RS-232 port. RS-232 is used in this arrangement, much like in the diagram here. We have a PC on one side, which is one of the laptops, a PC on the other side. Each of them has a modem, and those modems are connected over a telephone network. I don't want to dive too deep into the details of RS-232 here, but I think the important thing to cover is the format of each character that's sent over the wire. And in fact, RS-232 allows you to specify different formats. You can have parity bits, you can change the length of the data that is sent, you can have multiple stop bits, and that sort of thing. We don't really need to go into too much detail in order to understand this, other than to know that our example we were using what's called 8N1, which means we have eight data bits, these guys in the middle, one stop bit, and the N means we have no parity bit. So if you take nothing else from this part, the only thing we need to know is that there's a start bit, there's a stop bit, and there are eight data bits in between. So one other thing we want to note here is that the most significant bit here is on the right, and the least significant bit is on the left. So this is the 128 place, and this is the one place. Most of the time, binary is written the other way around when being read by humans, which is something that we'll do when we start decoding the data on the wire later on. So let's grab a copy of this first character. We're just going to move it over to an image editor, and we'll put a grid over it so we can look at the individual bits a little more easily. Note that we don't know what width is the best for the grid right away, so we'll need to play around with this for a bit. So let's pause here and take a look at this. We're expecting to see 10 bits. The start bit, which is always a zero at the beginning, the stop bit, which is always a one at the end, and then eight data bits in between that represent whatever character we typed. When the modem's idle, it's playing the mark tone, which is the one tone, and the start bit being at zero means that it will transition down to the space tone, and we can see that right here. Then we have eight data bits in between, and we transition up to a one or a mark tone at the very end to go back to idle. Now we can actually transcribe these bits. Start with a zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero, and a stop bit of one. Taking out the start and the stop bits, we get the data bits and we'll reverse those for readability. We get 64 plus 8 equals 72. Looking up an ASCII table, figure out what character 72 is, and it's an H. So there's our first character done. Moving on to the next character, we'll do the same thing. Copy it out to our image editor, overlay our grid. Now we know the proper width is 16. This takes a little less time. And we'll freeze right here and take a quick look at it. So we should see the same thing, a transition to the space tone for the start bit, a transition up to the mark tone for the stop bit, and then eight data bits in between. Of course, this time the data bits look a little bit different. Transcribing them, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, zero, 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 one, zero, and a stop bit of one. We'll take off the start and stop bits and then reverse the bit order. And then we'll see we have a 64, a four, and a one, which is 69, nice. Going back to our ASCII table, we'll look up 69 and that's an E. Moving on to the next character, we'll just scroll over, copy it out, and use the same process.
transcribing it, we have a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and a 1. Taking off our start and stop bits again, we can grab the data bits and reverse them. And this time around, we have a 64, an 8, and a 4, which equals 76. Checking the ASCII table again, we'll see that a 76 is an L. Moving on to the fourth character now, we'll follow the same process again. And transcribing it, we get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1. Of course, this is the same as the previous character, you can see up here. So we won't bother actually checking the ASCII table for that one, and we'll just copy it. Moving on to the final character. We have a 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1. Removing the start and stop bits and flipping it around. And we have 64 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 79. Looking at the ASCII table, that's an O. And altogether we have H-E-L-L-O, hello. So what about the higher frequency when I typed hello in the other direction? Well, we can see that here in the spectrogram. And if we overlay the data from before, we can see that even though it's using the higher mark and space frequencies, the shape is the same for the first two characters. We won't go through transcribing the bits for the higher frequencies since it would be exactly the same, but this is just to demonstrate that the same data was sent in the other direction using the exact same format, just at the two different frequencies associated with the answering modem instead of the originating modem. For this last part, I'd like to just talk about timing briefly. The modems we're using here are 300 baud modems, meaning they send 300 symbols per second. Now, in this case, a symbol is simply a single bit, a one or a zero. So baud rate and bit rate are the same thing. This isn't always true. For higher speed modems, like a 1200 bits per second modem or a 2400 bits per second modem using V22 or V22 bis, the symbol rate is actually 600. So they're 600 baud but 1200 or 2400 bits per second. How modems go about sending two or four bits per symbol is something I'd like to cover in a later video. Regardless, the important thing to know here is that we're using 300 baud modems that transmit at 300 bits per second, and one symbol is the same as one bit. So if we carefully select where the 10 bits that we were analyzing are, we can get an exact-ish start and end time. So in this case, down at the bottom, we can see we have 24.675 seconds and 24.643 seconds for the start. So the length of the sample is 24.675 minus 24.643, or in other words, 0 0.032 seconds. So this is how long it took to send 10 bits in our recording. Now we can also work out how long we would expect 10 bits to take to send on a 300 baud modem. 300 baud is 300 symbols per second, which is 1 300th of a second per symbol. So if we calculate that, we should see 0 0.0033 seconds per symbol. 10 symbols is 10 bits, so if we multiply this by 10, we should see the length of time that it took to send 10 bits. And we get 0 0.033 seconds, which is pretty close to what we measured up above. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching this intro to Audio Frequency Shift Keying and Bell 103.